What is up, Trouble Alert Nation? I'm your host, Killer Keemstar. Let's get right into the news. Today, we have a interview that you have been waiting for and asking me for over and over again on Twitter with Mick Juggernuggets. Mick Juggernuggets, how's it going? Yeah, what's up, Keem? So, the first question, the biggest question that everyone wants to ask is, how did you come up with this idea of the Psycho series? Hold on, Keem, can I just say something real quick? Yeah, go ahead. I'm glad you're back, man. <laughs> I'm going to be straight up with you. I, I hate the, I swear to God, people, Keem did not pay me to say this. I feel for the man as somebody who portrayed a character and was entertaining you guys. I know how hard it is to deal with the viewers and ignorance and not knowing who somebody is. I, I, I'll, I'll be honest, I've been a closet viewer of Drama Alert. I think it's entertaining as shit and, and it helps keep me in the know of the community and what's going on. And like, I, I, I don't care who you are. I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that watch Drama Alert and, you know, whether you like Keem as a person or not, I mean, you have to respect the man because he's an entertainer and he puts on a great show. That's all I had to say, man. Dude, you're 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 killing. He didn't tell me he was gonna say any of this before <laughs> the interview, so I'm just sitting here like blushing and stuff. But all right. Um, <laughs> so how did I? Come thank up you, with thank you, thank I, you so much for saying that. Um, dude, seriously, straight from the heart, man. I, I don't know why everybody's got to be so hateful in this community. We're all team internet. Uh, it's all, you know, let, let's help each other. We're, we're all characters. We're all entertainers. There's a purpose for every single person in this community. You know, there, there's good people. There's bad people. There's in between. But it's all about entertainment. That's why we're here. I, I feel like the, the YouTube as a whole has, like, shifted into this, like, um, everybody's trying to take everyone out. You know what I mean? Um, mm -hmm. And I've seen it uh, more since I was kind of the target. But this is not about me. This is about you. So how did you come up with this idea uh, of the series? It The series came about because my life was boring as shit. I, I would hear people always say, I don't know what to film. My life's really boring. So I said, you know what? What if I just make up a fake life? Uh, one that's crazy, one that people can't help but watch, this train wreck that is derailing and, and you can't look away. And that's really how it started and then it just evolved from there. So the first video of the Psycho series is where your dad like drives over your video games, right? That was actually not the first one. That was the fifth one. Uh, the first was the Xbox Destruction in 2012. You've seen those videos, you know, take off, and that that kind of inspired you to just continue the series. Now, when you started this thing, did you write the whole thing out? At what point did you decide to, like, write out everything, you know? When the shredding of the video games went viral and, and got like 12 million views in a week, that's when I had to slap myself in the face and say, this is crazy, there needs to be more. <laughs> so did you write the whole thing out or was this a process? Were you like, you know, writing like 10 videos ahead of time or, or how did this all happen? The creative process is, is such a beautiful one where it's like, you know, I had so much planned, but the important thing as a as a creator is to leave yourself open to new possibilities as you're going along. So, you know, there were marks that I had to hit and, and, and stories that needed to be told, but I always left myself uh, with this ability to adapt and, and interact also with the fans and incorporate things that they would say into the story. Now, how did you convince your dad to be a part of this? Because when it started to get really popular, I mean, you guys were kind of being harassed, right? As we were just saying, the the viewers can, when they band together, it can get pretty ugly. Um, there was a lot of harassment throughout. The characters portrayed were not nice people, um, right. by and large. Uh, there was a few exceptions, but uh, it was never easy to uh, to put put this show on, uh, especially especially for my father. It was he did at any point was he like we can't do this anymore i mean were were they getting burnt out at some point during the series 
There is definitely uh, some real life drama and things that occurred, and you know all that will will be shown eventually. So I remember at one point you guys got swatted um, and the family got swatted and you uploaded a video and you were like, guys, don't do this type of stuff and we're going to be taking some action. Um, was that real or was that part of the script or? That is a great question because doing this, it's almost like a boy who cried wolf moment where it's like, it, what is real and what's not? You know, what is, what's the truth here? The truth, and I'll give it to you here on Drama Alert. That swatting was real. Um, I think it was May 5th last year, and, you know, kid kid made a call. And the short of it is I ended up with uh, on the ground with guns point blank to my head. That's the thing with doing this type of series is I felt like, you know, the, the, the lines were blurred multiple times. Uh, there was a situation where you got arrested, okay? I thought it was fake and, and we investigated it and we kind of found out that it was part of, you know, your show. And then you changed the script to incorporate that, right? <laughs> it seems somebody found, somebody named Keemstar found the cop outfit <laughs> online. Dude, okay. <laughs> First, at first, I was like, I hate this guy because like stuff would happen, right? Like your dad would destroy something and all of your fans would spam me and be like, you got to report this. <laughs> you know, his dad just destroyed his gaming room. Like you have to report this or Jesse just got arrested. You have to report this. And I'm like, but I, I, I know that this is not real. And like, so I got I kept on getting put into the situation. And the worst was at the very end when you killed your father, right? When that happened, my Twitter just lit up and it would not stop. I was making videos. I'm like, this is not real. And they just kept saying, yes, it is. Yes, it is. Like, it's like you would lose cr credibility at that point, but but everybody wants it. So then it's like, what do you do? Right, right. No, I don't. I didn't blame you at all, but I was just in this situation <laughs> where I'm like, okay, guys, this isn't real. But then when I say it's not real, you know, the fans just don't believe me. They're like, no, right. it is real. And you're just not reporting it because you don't like him or something, you know, like. Right, right. Um, so when it finally ended, it was like, <sighs> finally. Thank, thank God. Like <laughs> like my dad said at the end. Thank God it's over. Yeah. <laughs> um, so um, a lot of people have been saying on Twitter they want to know more info with corn. Like what happened with corn? Um, are you really upset with this guy? Well, uh, the the truth is, Corn and I have been best friends uh, for the last ten years. We, we met freshman year of high school. You know, we broed out playing video games. He helped me with videos. Um, you know, he helped me with the series. He, he shot most of it. And uh, once the series ended, uh, he left and he, he's done. And he's pursuing being a police officer, which is which is what he went into college for. Definitely no ill will. You know, people are, are totally assuming different things. Um, I respect the man, and, and he did a good job filming the series, and, and now he's pursuing, you know, his own his own passion, not not so much mine. So there's no beef there. No beef with with corn. <laughs> okay. All right. A lot of people thought there was. Okay. So, um, my next question is this: There were a lot of videos that came out that were like trying to expose the series of being fake or staged or scripted. Uh, did you watch any of these exposed videos? And if you did, did you change the script to try to make it uh, more believable because of them? I always consumed the exposed content. I, I always thought it would help me, you know, do better in telling the story. So, you know, no plot holes, nothing like that. I, I ironically follow a few of the channels that, that tried to expose me. So we're buddy, buddy now. Um, but I, I respected the people cause you know, they're trying to, they're trying to uh, make something of the channel and, and, and get some views. And I, they created this whole like counterculture, which was neat. Um, but yeah, I, I kind of use those as a gauge and I'd be like, ah, well, I'm doing kind of shitty if they're, they have all this material. Ideally, they'd have nothing on me. Um, it was, it was like almost like a competition in a way. When I watch these exposed videos, you could tell that like it, it wasn't coming from a point of evil, right? They were fans, right? And if you watch, uh, any fans of a series like Game of Thrones or, or whatever, 
those fans will try to like solve the mysteries of the of the series and it was almost like that with this um there was a situation where i believe you worked at an ice cream shop and someone did an interview with with the store owners and they were saying that they were very upset that you you were there what happened with that was that real or were they playing a part the, yeah, I saw rumors spreading. There was no lawsuit. Um, the, the, the only the ticket was is I, I worked at a lot of businesses in this job hunting series, and uh, the kids or, or even anyone haters would call these businesses and just spam the phones. And you know, as a place of business, that that interrupts what they're trying to do. So uh, the ice cream store started getting too many calls because they had the number on the T-shirt. So I took down the video, and unfortunately, people started uploading. Uh, we're we're all good though. What what what's happening now? Like there are these rumors that you're going to be like in a movie or you're going to be in some TV show that you're moving to Hollywood. All all this stuff has come out that people were saying, you know, prior to the Psycho series ending, that you know you were doing some big Hollywood stuff. Is that true? There was a lot of rumors going around about Red Sun Entertainment. That is just a management company. They thought I was moving to L.A., um, but it's just merely, uh, you know, my manager, and I'm, I'm not going anywhere, uh, and I just want them to know that, that, you know, I'll be in Jersey with my family still making videos for sure. Now, for the next year, you're planning on showing a lot of behind-the-scenes and real drama on the channel that happened with the Psycho series. Um are you currently writing another series or thinking about another series? That is a great question. I I always have a little something up my sleeve. Uh, I am working on something, and uh, that'll that'll come to light uh, before you know it. But but I am working on some projects that I think everyone will enjoy. During this whole process, where you're making all these videos. Did anything funny or outrageous happen behind the scenes, like <laughs> off camera, that you'd like to share? I'll say, I'll say, generally we we took it pretty seriously, um, but there were a few moments like uh, there was there was one scene at the farm. You know, Jesse's character is working at this farm, you know, being ridiculous, and uh, the the farmer character, my uncle Chris, my my dad's actual brother. Uh, he's a bigger dude, and he's got this, you know, southern accent. Like, Jesse, you know, let's get the uh, piggies clean, and then we'll get some dinner. And he he was supposed to chase me in this field um, because I, I forget the context of it, but I see Uncle Chris coming towards me. I'm like, oh, shit, here comes this big motherfucker. So I, I start booking it through this field. While we were scripting this thing out, I told Uncle Chris he's going to need to run. He's like, I, I can't, I can't run. And it, and it was like, what? What do you mean you can't run? I'm dead serious. He's like, I can't run. Uh, I can jog for five steps, but that's all I got. This is one and done, one take. And I'm just like, oh, geez. So so we film it. I'm running through the field. He's out of breath. He can't even say his lines because he can't breathe. And then he tackles me in, in the field, and, and we got it done, and, and that was all well and good. Later that night, um, I get a call from from his wife or my, my aunt, and uh, – she says he's in the hospital, um, and, and he actually went into the cardiac arrest. And, and I guess this part isn't really funny, but um. <laughs> no, you should see my face right now. It went from this giant smile to oh my god, popcorn just fell out of your mouth. <laughs> and I, you know, I was like, holy shit, you know, he, you know, he, he he had a heart attack, or you know, I, I don't know what's going on. And, and then she's like, I'm just kidding, he's fine. I can't believe you had my husband run around. I was like, what the fuck. <laughs> Who trolls me like that and, and makes a joke like he's dying like, and I killed him because he ran in a scene. Uh, so ridiculous. Um, and, and and just, it was always funny because we'd do this thing where we'd film a really hard scene and we would make the actors in it uh, think that it wasn't good enough and we would have to do it again and we would actually film the reactions to that, almost like pranking them. Uh, and that was always fun. There's some good behind the scenes of that. And that's going to be coming out this year. Oh, definitely. That's going to be really, really interesting to the diehard fans of the series. What did you, how did you react when, you know, you would put out a story where, you know, Jesse's character was just completely out of control and then the response would be tons of dislikes and people unsubbing and like, how, how did you 
fight through that because it's like you want people to watch the series, but you have to play this character. Like that had to have been very difficult. There was always a balance that had to be maintained, and and I there were many nights where I was just frustrated with the audience. You know, I loved them to death for finding me and watching the content, but because of the nature of the series and, and the portrayal of reality and where it was going, you know, it was the gradual decline of mental health of Jesse. And I did some questionable things that people didn't agree with. There were days where there's mass unsubs, there was petitions floating around, and it became difficult to run a business like that. If you if you hate the main character, you know, you're, you're not going to gain subs or, or grow. So, you know, I would have to do damage control a lot, or I would have to kind of curve back the, the series. I'd have to tone it down a little bit because the audience wasn't ready for where it was going. Right. Did you did you ever have a hard time, like, coming out of character? Like, you know, were you ever in the store and you felt like, you know, the character? There were many like times. Out in the world? Oh, definitely. There were, there were many times where I, I would forget who I am as crazy as that sounds there was one time I was laying in bed after I was got back into the house after being kicked out living in a tent and I thought to myself I was like I am so glad I'm back home <laughs> and I was just I, I was like wait what the fuck did I just think and no that's that's false and, and you know sometimes you know you you you, and, and you reenact these things you, you act out these things and it feels very real in that moment and and you're doing it with your actual family members and it's hard for that not to sink in and kind of fuck with your head a little bit right um, and you know part of me part of me just really feels like i lived this and and i killed my dad like a part of me will have to live with that shit all right, I guess we'll uh, we'll end it here. But uh, final question: A lot of your fans have been asking, you know, what is the secret of YouTube? Can you give me some YouTube tips? <laughs> like, you know, how how did you get so big? You know, stuff like that. So let's let's end it with that. As someone who's done YouTube since 2006, for the first seven years, I had 200 subs and struggled a lot. I would attribute it to innovating, try something new. Um, the current theme right now is kind of like milk and trends and I think that's important to do is, is to know what what some key words like psycho is a, is a big a big word that's like pretty intense and, and gaming is pretty popular on YouTube um, and, and play to your strengths you know I don't think I'm that special I'm not that great I, I'm, I'm a decent actor and I had my family so I made something that really um, combine those those facets and you, you made something amazing <laughs> well thank you man you, you really did make something amazing because of the amount of content you know it it would i think it would be uh somewhat easy to to make one video but to make as many videos as you did and to make them as exciting as you did uh that took some skill and a lot of work so congratulations on the success uh, well, of the thank series you, sir and uh, guys, if you enjoyed this interview, make sure you slap a like on it. Check out Mick Jugger Nuggets. Sweet. I think that was a good interview. That was awesome.